For over half a century, the Porsche 911 has captivated automotive enthusiasts worldwide, evolving through eight generations of meticulous engineering and timeless design. Its legacy as a rear-engine marvel remains unchallenged, embodying the pinnacle of luxury and performance. But amidst the shifting tides of climate change, Porsche faces a pivotal choice. Uphold the tradition of roaring gas-powered icons or embrace a future that's eco-friendly yet equally thrilling. Enter the Porsche 911 Hybrid, a bold step towards sustainability without sacrificing the heart-pounding excitement synonymous with the brand. As Porsche gears up to electrify 80% of its lineup by 2030, including iconic models like the 911, anticipation swirls around how this hybrid evolution will redefine automotive excellence. But the 911's journey isn't just about cutting-edge technology, it's a story of resilience and innovation. Did you know back in the 90s, Porsche nearly shelved the 911 in favor of more conventional models? Yet, their commitment to heritage prevailed, ensuring the 911's enduring legacy. Its unmistakable silhouette, worn from the same lineage as the legendary Volkswagen Beetle, echoes Porsche's pioneering spirit in automotive design. From its humble beginnings as the 901 to becoming a global symbol of speed and sophistication, each iteration of the 911 has pushed boundaries. Whether it's the iconic air-cooled flat-six engine or the coveted Carrera RS, every detail underscores Porsche's relentless pursuit of perfection. As we explore the new frontier of the Porsche 911 Hybrid, join us in celebrating its past, present, and electrifying future. This is more than a car. It's a testament to Porsche's unwavering commitment to driving excellence forward. The Porsche 911 G-Series introduced a significant difference in styling and technology compared to previous iterations. The G-Series was in production from 1973 to 1989 and saw the introduction of turbocharging to the 911. The 1975 Porsche 911 Turbo boasted a powerful 260 horsepower making it one of the fastest 911s of its time. However, turbochargers were not commonly used in 911s back then. The 964, or Porsche 911 of the late 80s, was an evolution of the 911 and introduced a lot of new tech. The 964 had more streamlined bumpers that were seamlessly incorporated into the car's design. It was also the first 911 to have all-wheel drive known as Carrera 4, and an automatic transmission. The Carrera 2, a rear-wheel drive version, followed shortly after. The 993 is still considered by many to be the most beautiful and well-balanced of the bunch. This beauty had the first six-speed manual gearbox in a 911, as well as the Tetronic S automatic transmission with shifter controls positioned on the steering wheel. Under the hood, it had a 3.6-liter flat six making 268 horsepower, which was later bumped up to 282 horsepower in 1996. Next up, we have the polarizing 996. This car had to happen following such a beloved generation of 911s. The water-cooled 996 arrived in 1998 to grumbles and cries that it had lost its character, something of a running theme for new generation 911s and the implacable Porsche aficionados they try to please. But we really can't blame Porsche. The company was in financial trouble, so it turned to Toyota for consulting help. The base engine was a 3.4-letter flat six making 300 horsepower, with a twin-turbocharged 911 turbo arriving in 2000 and putting out 414 horsepower. Moving on to the 997, round headlights made a swift return in 2004 with the all-new 911 generation. It had a similar shape to the 996, but with more delicate detailing. All had more than 300 brake horsepower, while the new GT2 entered uncharted territory with 530 brake horsepower. Once again, claims of diminishing character greeted the 997's arrival, with purists grumbling about less feel of some steering and the softening of the 911's exciting edges thanks to stronger grip. But fear not, the refreshed 997 arrived in 2009, also known as 997.2. It featured numerous performance and chassis enhancements across its ever-growing lineup of trims. Then we have the 991, which arrived in 2011. 
While it may have been called the prettiest 911 in decades, it faced plenty of criticism for its new electric steering. Yet there was much to distract from that, including an impressively new round-edge GT car character in the standard Carrera models, as well as a new level of savagery with the insane GT3 RS. The Targa was cool again. The 991 was a completely redesigned platform featuring a larger chassis that provided better handling and more interior space. The base model had a new 3.4-letter flat 6 that was more efficient and produced 345 horsepower, while the Carrera S had a 3.8-litter flat 6 making 395 horsepower. Styles included coupe, convertible, Carrera 4, and Carrera 4S variants. Porsche 992 The Porsche 992 is the ultimate culmination of over half a century of automotive evolution, with occasional leaps and bounds. The 992 is certainly an evolution of the leap forward that was the 991. It's absolutely breathtaking. One of the most notable features of the 992 is the wide rear fenders that all models have, including the Carrera 4 and 4S. The door handles are now recessed and pop out for use, adding a sleek look to the car. A neat detail is the contoured hood that mimics that of the original 911 Classic. But the real magic happens inside the car. It features multiple digital screens, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, a Wi-Fi hotspot, and two USB ports, but the analog tachometer is always at the center, reminding you that you're driving a true sports car. One of the major talking points of the 992 was the gearbox, which had provisions for an electric motor. At that time, August Achleitner, the chief engineer of the 911, claimed that Porsche had not committed to producing a hybrid, but now it seems that wasn't necessarily the truth. In an interview with Car Magazine, Oliver Bloom confirmed that a 911 hybrid is on the way. While we don't have a specific release date for the 911 hybrid, he reiterated Porsche's aim to achieve 80% electrified sales by 2030. Now, the 992-based hybrid prototype has been spotted numerous times in testing, and it's confirmed to be the 992.2 generation, which is scheduled to debut sometime in 2023 as a 2024 model. The Porsche 911 Turbo as hybrid will likely use the same 3.8-liter twin-turbo flat-6 as the standard car, but it could also feature a 136-horsepower electric motor, just like other hybrid Porsches, to produce a total of between 700 and 800 horsepower. Now, we all know that hybrid drivetrains are nothing new, but Porsche engineers had a tough job on their hands when it came to integrating them into the 911's design. The challenge was to add an electric drivetrain without compromising the 911's balance and performance-driven design. It was a tight squeeze, but they managed to fit it in without sacrificing too much trunk space. The first Porsche 911 hybrid won't be a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Instead, it'll be a mild hybrid with a 400-volt system. The electric aspect of propulsion will be charged by the flat six engine, which will give it a boost when needed. This means that the hybrid 911 will be able to match and possibly even beat the 0 to 60 miles per hour time of the normal 911 Turbo S, which is an impressive 2.7 seconds. We're expecting Porsche to release a brand new chassis with a redesign in 2024, which will give them more room to play with and ensure the car is perfectly balanced. The 911 GT 3 could see a tweaked version of its 4.0-lettered naturally aspirated flat-6 for more power too, with an increase also possible for the 3.8-liter twin-turbo unit found in the 911 Turbo and Turbo as models. And let's not forget, a new hybrid version of the Turbo as range topper could be on the way. Now you might be wondering how this hybrid system compares to the Porsche 918 Spiders. Well, the Porsche 918 Spider has two electric motors, but one of them powers only the front axle while the other works with the gasoline engine to power the rear wheels. But hey, that doesn't mean it won't perform well. With Porsche's engineering and the power of a hybrid system, this 911 will still be a beast on the road. Now, we don't have any pictures of the interior yet, but we expect some updates to the infotainment and maybe even some new display options in the gauge cluster for the hybrid 911s. But don't worry, the recognizable appearance and superb handling of the 911 won't be going anywhere. Of course, with the 911's popularity and market dominance, the new hybrid version has big shoes to fill, 
but we're confident that Porsche will deliver, and we can't wait to see this car in action. So what do you think? Will the Hybrid 911 be a hit or a miss? Let us know in the comments below.